a 4 foot wide and 750 foot long pedestrian suspension bridge has been spanning across the river Machu. The century old bridge colloquially called Julta Pool meaning the hanging bridge was 50 foot over the river. It was built in the year 1880s by Vogji Thakur, the local king. It connected Darbargav Palace with Nazarbagh Palace, the residences of erstwhile royal family of Morbi state. Today, Nazarbagh Palace is Lagdirji Engineering College. A century ago, only 15 people were allowed to cross the bridge at once, fearing any greater weight might sway the bridge harshly. In fact, the toll bridge was closed for six months in 2022 for repairs. Then it was reopened on 26th October 2022 on the occasion of the Gujarati New Year. On October 30, barely four days after it had been reopened, some 400 people had bought tickets to be on the bridge in celebration of Diwali and Chahat Puja, the locally celebrated New Year. Another source of information says that more than 500 people were on the bridge at the time of the collapse, far exceeding the official capacity of 125 people. As a result, the 140-year-old pedestrian suspension bridge collapsed at 6.32 p.m., killing at least 135 people. Images of rescue and recovery operations showed the walkway had divided at its midpoint with some pieces still hanging from the snapped cables. The social media flaunted visuals of individuals crowded on the bridge and some attempting to rock the bridge to sway and oscillate as a swing. This was immediately seized on by commenters as a cause of the collapse. Hi, I am Ilal Alam from Al Zebra. Come, let us see the case study of how the Morbi bridge collapsed. Before that, let's begin with the structure of the bridge. If people want to cross the river, there should be a platform or a deck connecting the both ends. If the deck is simply mounted across the end supports, it would deflect due to the payload or traffic of people. Hence, the deck should be supported by means of vertical suspension cables. These cables are subjected to the tensile force or tension and hence made of ductile materials. As the vertical cables cannot stand as such, they need to be connected with the main suspension cable which again experiences tensile force or tension. So, the main cable has to be ductile. The main cable cannot stay in the air and hence it should be secured with the vertical towers or vertical column piers. Now, while the vertical suspension cable and main cables are subjected to the tensile stresses, the vertical column piers experience the compressive load carrying overall weight of the deck including the traffic of people. Now let us see what triggered the collapse. Here which zones are vulnerable or the weakest? The main cable, vertical suspenders and the joints connecting the vertical suspenders to the deck or the vulnerable parts apart from the anchor ridges at the both ends. The regular inspection and maintenance are very much essential as these are the parts where loads are regularly subjected to and fatigue would develop at these zones. Well, let's focus further on the causes. Is the overcrowding, the material fatigue or the poor maintenance the major reason for the collapse? Let us address the hypothesis one by one. First, let's focus on overcrowding. A structural engineer in ENGTips.com has estimated that the bridge could have supported the weight of over 3,000 people despite of the official limit of 125. It is surprising. How? Even if average people weigh 300 pounds, that is 130 kilo each, and still have a factor of safety 1.5, the bridge could have survived according to him. In normal practice, including 19th century bridges, have a factor of safety 6 to 7. A factor of safety 6 means the bridge could withstand 6 times the allowable loads. So, is it not due to overcrowding? Actually, the bridge was designed to withstand the official limit considering the dynamic loading. The engineer in ENGTips.com seems to have considered only the static load and hence arrived at the whopping number of 3000 which is not convincing. So we cannot rule out overcrowding. Or is it due to the material fatigue? 
unless the cable suffered some serious corrosions, the bridge could have not failed. According to Dr. Sharvil Alex Farroz, PhD from IIT Bombay and CEO of Infrastructure Risk Management Mumbai says that the real reason behind the collapse might not be the deck plate below that swung down like trapdoors or men pulling on vertical cables or rocking the bridge but the aging rusty main suspension cables above on which the vertical cables hang. These cables might have been untouched in the bridge renovation. The visuals from India Times shows it. Mr. Little Inch, an engineer on engtips.com said, I suspect this is either at the top of the tower or one of the long vertical hangers. It looks like about two-thirds of the wire core had already snapped before the event of the reopening took its toll. Hmm, it's shocking. How come a renovated structure could have escaped from such serious corrosions? Or is it due to the design? Mr. Saptadeep Sarkar, a structural engineer working for Engineers India Limited, observes that the bridge that failed was recently renovated, so fatigue failure can safely be ruled out as a possible cause. Okay, let's assume that the renovation was properly carried out and rule out the material fatigue as the cause. So what could be the next probable reason? The connection point where the vertical suspenders made the deck of the bridge could be the next in line as a cause. Mr. Sarkar also agrees to this point. The synchronous dynamic loading on the bridge created excessive deflection of the joint of the suspender to the bridge deck. Hmm. Let's recall the Millennium Bridge across the River Thames in London. The lack of lateral support caused the bridge sway when the traffic increased. The similar thing could have happened here as well. Thus, the most probable reason for failure is not due to men rocking the bridge holding the vertical cable, but the bridge lacking the lateral support could have started naturally swaying violently as that of Millennium Bridge with the traffic of people on a poorly maintained bridge whose materials were well beyond their fatigue limits. As a result, the joints of suspender would have given way leading to snapping of the rusty cables. How safe are the bridges in India? The articles published by Joshi et al. in 2018 reveal that the situation of bridges in India is not that good either. Based on their survey reports, it is found that 6,551 national highway bridges are structurally deficient and out of these bridges, 86% are below the age of 49 years. This statistic comprises of 5,591 minor bridges, 664 major bridges and 296 extra large bridges. In the conventional engineering techniques, we cannot predict which one of these will collapse in future. With this, I am signing off today and will meet you again next week. And advanced New Year greetings. Thank you very much for your patience.